Good day. Welcome to IT 292 Networking 1 Module 12. For the lesson title, Network Layer Protocols and Internet Protocol. Lesson Objectives Number 1. I can identify the role of the network layer as it describes communication from one end device to another end device. Number 2. I can examine the most common network layer protocol, internet protocol, and its features for providing connectionless and best effort service. For the material, we have student learning module, then reference is from CCNA Network Fundamentals Chapter 5. Before we proceed, I have prepared a checking up. If students guess me, 1 up to 10, you can check the answers. Along, the, along this video. So, in number one, the answer is letter P. P as in picture. Now, let's proceed. Again, for the productivity, successful and unsuccessful people do not vary greatly in their abilities. They vary in their desire to reach their potential based from John Maxwell. Alright, so next, for the lesson preview, Again, we have seen how network application and services on one end device can communicate with applications and services running on another end device. The protocols of the OSI model network layer specify addressing and processes that enable transport layer data to be packaged and transported. The network layer encapsulation allows its content to be passed to the destination with a network or on another network with minimum overhead. The lesson focuses on the role of the network layer, examining how its device divides networks into groups of hosts to manage the flow of the data packets within a network. We also consider how communication between networks is facilitated. This communication between networks is called routing. We have here a figure for the network layer. As we communicate our data, our devices use the transport layer to connect uh, processes. And the network layer enables devices to reach each other so for the what i know chart can the answer what is network layer number two what is encapsulation number three what is routing so this is based on your prior knowledge before we start so for the main lesson for uh, the introductory of our lesson can you watch this hello and welcome to Module 8 of the Introduction to Network, the Network Layer. So let's um, remember I'm going to ask you to take a few questions. Hello? Okay, here we go. So what is the Network Layer is responsible for? The Network Layer is the one that grabs the segment from the Transport Layer and encapsulates it into a packet. So here's what I want you to write down, the four basic operations that the Network Layer does. It does the addressing after it grabs the segment and encapsulates it in the packet. It puts the source and the destination IP address on it. It encapsulates, that's what I just said, encapsulates layer four segment into a packet. Routing after it finishes the packet is trying to find the best route outside in a, land, in a WAN to the destination. And decapsulation, of course, being able to grab the frame and pull the packet out. Okay, for the guess me number two, the answer in number two, letter N, as in network. All right, so encapsulation, like I said, you take the data from layer seven, when you add a header to it, a segment, and layer four segment header, it becomes this whole thing is called a segment. That's what transport layer protocol data unit is called. All of the segment is placed in here, and when you add a, an IP headers to it, it becomes, this whole thing becomes a package, okay? 
All right, so here are the three characteristics of IP, the Internet Protocol, which operates at layer three. Write these down, and we're gonna write a definition for each one of them. Connectionless, best effort, and media independent. So let's start with connectionless. Connectionless means when I send you out data, um, I don't have to see if you are connected or not, if you're not up. All right, so I'll just send out the data. If you're not up, too bad your letter is not gonna get there, right? So that's what connectionless is. Connection-oriented means, on the other hand, if it was connection-oriented, and it's not, is uh, before I go out to send you the data, I would have to call you to see if you're there. If you're there, then I go. If not, I don't even transmit the data. So connection-oriented means you gotta make a connection first before you send any data out. Connection less means you don't check to see if he's connected or not. You just go, just transmit the data. And that's what packets are doing. You don't even know if the IP address exists or not. You just send the data back out. Best that, remember you're writing that definition as. Connection less means you don't make a connection. You don't make a connection with the destination before you send out any data. Best effort is mean you're trying to find the best route to the destination. Right? Uh, there, nothing is guaranteed. So links may be down, but uh, you try to find the best path, uh, the best path to the destination. Media independent also. It doesn't matter if you have a coaxial cable, an, op an optical fiber cable, or a copper cable, wireless, IP packet can travel on any media. Why? Because the packet does not really travel on any of these media. They really are framed. So in here, if you are inside a LAN, you're all, the packet is traveling inside um, an Ethernet frame. If you are on a copper wire, maybe you're on a dedicated LAN, you could be traveling on a PPP frame. If you are on an optical, maybe an FDDI frame. You could be wireless, for example, on an 802.11 frame. Right? So they are media independent because they are really encapsulated in the frame. The frames are media independent, but the packet inside it, you know, he doesn't care where the, what the media is because the frame is the one that's carrying the packet from one device to the other. All right, so um, what is, let, let's take a look at the packet header itself. Here is the IPv4 header, and there's a lot of labels on it version this is, should tell us this is a version 4 here's where the ip addresses are located uh the time to live ttl number very important number this is every hop that you go through this number is decremented by one so if it reaches zero and you did not reach the destination if the ttl number reaches zero and you did not reach the destination then your packet is dropped did you ever ping, you type ping, an IP address and you get a timeout? Most likely is because the destination doesn't exist and the TTL number has reached zero uh, before your packet reached the destination. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other. Uh, there is the total link, uh, the header checksum, and so on. The protocol, it's an IP packet, for example. So here's what I want you to write also. This is what they header fields are, the labels. So please write these down. I know it's a little bit of a pain, but at least you'll do it once. We're not gonna do this again. Anyway, so let's take a look at IPv6 packet. Pretty much the same thing, not much. IPv6 is, uh, the major limitation is we have basically run out of IP addresses. You know, you know 32 bits is not good enough, so now we have 128 bits, two to the 128 is an extremely um, long number. We don't have to worry about this. And the biggest change is that we don't need NAT anymore, the network address translation to get a public IP address, to get on the internet. Everyone that is assigned um, an IPv6 address will be able to access the internet without having to be translated from private to public and so on. So you go right through your, from your private LAN to your destiny, to your internet without having to use the use of NAT, which is great for 
real-time communication, such as uh, voice over IP or, um, or video streaming. All right, so just imagine here is one billion addresses we have. Uh, a use of this alien is 10 to the 36. So there are that many addresses for IPv6. That's a lot. That's a lot of addresses, right? We never have to worry about that. So improvement to IPv6, please write these three points down. Well, you know, 10 to the 28, 128 beds. Improved packet handling, less fields on the packet, and no need for NAT, right? Less labels, which is really nice, right? We just talked about that. Even though the address is bigger, but there's less labels for the router to look at. So the packet will move much quicker. That's the whole idea. All right, so please write this down. Also, these are some of the labels that are seen or are placed on the IPv6 point. All right, um, what else do you need to know? Okay, routing. Another important, you know, the router, uh, I'm sorry, the network player, their responsibility is finding the best path to the destination. What does that mean, the best path? The best path means the quickest, really. Now, there are three different ways you can either communicate to yourself, that means you're sending data using a loopback address, 127.0, so if you ping 127.0.0.1 or ping colon colon one for IPv6, what you're really doing, you're tra checking the local host for connectivity. If he is able to encapsulate and decapsulate packets locally without having to communicate with anyone. You can communicate with local hosts, send data locally inside your LAN. Or you can communicate remotely. Just me, number three, letter R, as in robot. Going through your router outside. All right, so uh, <clears throat> we can, you know, IPv4 uses the IP address, the mask. We'll discuss more of that later on when we get into subnetting in the next few chapters. Uh, let's just move on, we'll get to that later on, but let's let's talk about the default gateway, okay? So all the lands, in, all the hosts in the LAN must know who the gateway is, which is this right here. So when you send out an AIP request, requesting the MAC address of somebody in your LAN, that somebody in the LAN will respond back to you. But what happens if you're saying, hey, if you're requesting an IP address because you're at, you're get, you got the IP address somebody remotely from outside, and you have that IP address and you said, hey, whoever has this IP address, give me your Mac. You're doing an ARP request, and nobody responds. So if nobody responds, listen to this. This is where, by default, you ask for the IP address of your gateway. Default gateway. In other words, if no, if you, if the destination is not in your land, by default, you go to your gateway so you can be sent outside. If you do not have the IP address of your gateway, you will not be able to communicate with the outside world, but you'll still be able to communicate internally. So one of the first things you want to do if you don't have connection to the outside world is, first of all, ping your loopback address, 127.0.0.1 for IPv4, or ping colon colon 1 if it's IPv6. Then you ping your default gateway. If your, if your default gateway responds, that means you're connected to your router. The problem is probably outside. All right, so PCs can have their own routing table. So by typing the command, I'm sorry, by typing the command, netstat-r, it tells you all the local links that you can communicate with. But typically the routing table, the routing happens on the routers. So when you send a packet to the router, what does the router do? Looks up the destination IP address, a stamp. Well, the first thing that the router does is it wraps the ethernet frame, pulls the packet out, looks at the destination IP address that's stamped on the packet, looks up a chart called the routing table and try to find where to send it to. 
So he says, oh, that IP address is, we have to send it this way. So he gives it to this interface. This interface will re-encapsulate the packet in a new frame and sends it to this router. And this router will do the same thing. Pull the packet out of that frame, looks at the destination IP address, looks up a chart for the routing table, and according to the chart, either send them out to the internet or send them out this way, depending on what the routing table tells them to. These are called routes in the routing table. So these routes in the routing table either can be, you know, statically typed in manually or dynamically, you know, the routers talk to each other. So please write down the, the three types of routes that are found in the routing table. Either they're directly connected, which means nobody has to type them in because, you know, you're directly connected to the router or manually an administrator typed them in or dynamically they're learned by a neighboring router they're, this router too told them that this network 1012 is located is connected to me so he tells r1 that so r1 will immediately place that in the router the administrator doesn't have to do anything because you're running a routing protocol called either rip ospf or eigr we'll talk about that uh sometimes in the future sometime in the future Get me number four, letter I. I as in ilo ilo. Default route means, so I don't even even, you know, default route means this is, will be forwarded to a specific interface no matter what. So, I, you know, uh, <clears throat> every packet that comes in will go out of this interface, for example. All right? If I look up the whole routing table and there's no match, by D, I'll go to the default route. So if I look at your packet and I don't have, I don't know where to send you to, you know, by default, I'm going to send you out of this interface or this interface or whatever. That's what that default route means. All right. So again, static routing is the administrator types it in. Configure, can you manually configure that. Dynamic routing is when the routers talk to each other to build a routing table. And all right. So here's the routing table. When you see the letter C means you're directly connected. The letter O means I learned it dynamically using OSPF protocol. Letter D, if you see the letter D in the routing table on the router, that means you learned it from EIGRP. If you see the letter R, it means you learned it dynamically using the routing protocol uh, RIP. C, that means you're directly connected. Those are the directly connected interfaces. And the default route usually will have the letter S next to the static with a star. All right, that's it for... Next one, as our source, Internet Protocol. We've all sat down and sent out an email message before, but have you ever thought about how the message gets from one place to another? This is Internet Protocol Explained. Our language is very different from the language that a computer uses, so the messages that we create need to be translated from an alphabetic text into an electronic signal before they can be sent. This translation is handled in the computer by the separate modules in the communication protocol. Because these protocols, or rules of conduct, usually communicate with two or more modules, they are best described as layers in a stack of protocols. These layers are the application layer, transport layer, internet layer, the link layer, and physical layer. The messages that we send are filtered through these layers and broken down into small chunks of data called packets. We start with the application layer to create our message. One example of a protocol from the application layer that you may be familiar with is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. The transport layer uses the Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, to encapsulate the data blocks from the application layer. It then moves to the internet layer where the internet protocol or IP is used to deliver the packets. These packets are delivered through the link layer, which is an ethernet cable, to the physical layer, 
which is the basic hardware of your computer network. The computer that receives these data packets moves them through the protocol stack in a reverse order so that the message can be reconstructed and understood. This has been Internet Protocol Explained. Okay, for the uh, main lesson, IP version 4, the network layer or OSI layer 3 provides services to exchange the individual pieces of data over the network between identify and devices. To accomplish this end-to-end -end transport, layer 3 uses four basic processes. One, addressing. First, the network layer must provide a mechanism for addressing these end devices. If individual pieces of data are to be directed to an end device, that device must have a unique address in an IP version 4 network. When this address is added to a device, the device is then referred to as a host. For the encapsulation, second, the network layer must provide encapsulation. Not only must the devices be identified with an address, the individual pieces, the network layer PDUS or PDU must also contain these addresses during the encapsulation process. Layer 3 receives the layer 4 PDU and adds layer 3 header or label to create the layer 3 PDU. When referring to the network layer, we call this PDU a packet. When a packet is created, the header must contain among other information, the, other, the address of the host to which it is uh, uh, being sent, this address is referred to as, an, as the destination address. The layer 3 header also contains the address of the, of the originating host. This address is called the source address. So for the next, is the routing. The network layer must provide services to direct these products or packets to their destination host. The source and destination host are not always connected to the same network. In fact, the packet might have to travel through many different networks along the way. Each packet must be guided through the network to to reach its final destination. Intermediary devices that connect the network are called routers. The role of the router is to select paths for and direct packets to other destination. This process is known as routing. And lastly, you have decapsulation. Finally, the packet arrives at the destination host and is processed at layer 3. The host examines the destination address to verify that the packet was addressed to this device. If the address is correct, the packet is decapsulated by the network layer and the layer 4 PDU contained in the packet is passed up to the appropriate service and transport layer okay so for the ip uh, version 4 for further information uh, before we start watching the video get me number five letter t as in tiger hey guys this is dg today we will learn ipv4 datagram format so let's start we know that the communication at the network layer is host to host, that is, computer to computer. A computer at one location wants to communicate with another computer at some other place in the world. 
and the medium for this communication is the internet. While posting a mail, we used to write sender's and receiver's address on the envelope. Similarly, internet addresses are required to send a message from one computer to another via the internet. We call such addresses as logical addresses. Just be number 6 letter T. In the network layer, these logical addresses are called IP addresses. If we write a series of binary bits, say 010010011, we say it is 10 bit in length. Similarly, IP addresses can be 32 bit in length or 128 bit in length. 32 bit IP addresses are called Internet Protocol version 4 or IPv4 addresses and provide a maximum of 2 raised to the power 32 addresses. 128 bit IP addresses are called Internet Protocol version 6 or IPv6 addresses and provide a maximum of 2 raised to the power 128 addresses. So, IPv6 gives much more flexibility in IP address allocation in a packet switched computer network. Please note that the data packets in the network layer are called datagrams. Based on the version of internet protocol used, there are two types of datagrams, IPv4 datagram and IPv6 datagram. Let's understand the format of IPv4 datagram in detail. Version number is 4 bit in length and specifies whether the datagram is of version 4 or of version 6. Different versions use different datagram formats. So, this field helps the internet protocol software running on a machine to decide how to process the received datagram. The header length is 4 bit in length and it tells the total length of IPv4 datagram header in terms of 4 byte word. If I say the value in this field is 5, it refers that the length of IPv4 header is 5 words. One word in IPv4 is 4 byte in length. Therefore, the total length of IPv4 header will be 5 into 4 that is 20 bytes. The option field is variable in length. It makes the IPv4 header vary in length too. And it ranges from 20 bytes to 60 bytes. If option field is empty, the value in header length field is 5 or 0101 which makes IPv4 header 20 bytes in length. If the option field is filled, the value in this field will be 1111 in binary or 15 in decimal format. It increases the header length to 15 into 4 that is 60 bytes. Therefore, IPv4 header varies from 20 bytes to 60 bytes. Next to the datagram header is the datagram payload or data. So, the value in the header length field indicates where the payload begins in the datagram. The payload in the IPv4 datagram is transport layers segment. Next is differentiated services. This field is 8 bit in length, out of which the first 6 bits are called code point or differentiated services code point and the last 2 bits are used for explicit congestion notification. Since TSCP is 6 bit in length, so there can be 2 raised to the power 6 or 64 possible bit combinations. These bit combinations are used to classify IP packets so that one class of IP packet can receive precedence over the other in a network. For example, IP packet used for network management must get precedence for the transmission over any other type of IP packet. Datagram length tells the total length of IP datagram that is header plus data. Since it is 16 bit in length, so theoretically the maximum length of the datagram is 2 raised to the power 16 minus 1 or 65535 bytes. However, it is rarely larger than 1500 bytes which allows the IP datagram to fit in the payload section of the Ethernet frame. The size of payload field in the Ethernet frame varies from 46 to 1500 bytes. Identifier, flags and fragmentation offset are used in case of IP fragmentation. Suppose the router receives a datagram of 4000 bytes. 
it has a 20 byte header so data is 3980 bytes this data should be encapsulated in an ethernet frame which supports a maximum of 1500 bytes in such a case 3980 bytes are divided into small units and packed into separate IP datagrams so that the whole data can be transmitted. This is called IP fragmentation. In case of fragmented data, the receiver should be able to identify that these are IP fragments and they should be combined in correct order to form the original data unit. Fragmented IP packets are identified with the help of identifier field. When an IP datagram is created, a value is written in the identified field. For the next IP datagram, the value is incremented by 1. However, if the IP datagram is fragmented, the same identifier value is written in all the fragments. Flags are 3 bit in length, out of which only 2 bits are used, called do not fragment or more fragment. If D is set to 0, the IP datagram can be fragmented. If not, it should not be fragmented. The value of 1 in the M field indicates that the datagram is not the last fragment. If the datagram has 0 in this field, it means either it is the last fragment or it is the only fragment. Now the receiver has identified the IP fragments with the help of flags and identifier. These fragments should be arranged in proper order so as to form the original IP datagram. Here, 13 bit fragmentation offset solves the issue. Fragmentation offset tells the relative portion of the fragments with respect to the whole datagram. For the first fragment, the relative position is 0. Dividing the length of the first fragment by 8 gives the offset value for the second fragment. Adding the length of first and second fragment, dividing the sum by 8 gives the offset value for the third fragment and so on. In this way, the receiver finds the correct order of the received fragments to form the original IP datagram. IPv6 does not allow datagram fragmentation. Time to leave. This field is used to limit the lifetime of an IP datagram as it travels through the internet. While transmitting a datagram, the source host sets a number in this field. When a router receives the datagram, it decrements this field by 1. If it reduces to 0, the router discards the datagram, hence limiting its lifetime. It is useful in cases where the routing tables become corrupted and cause the datagram to circulate among routers for a long time. Since time to leave field decrements with each hop, so such datagrams will be dropped by routers at last. Protocol When the IP datagram reaches its final destination, the value in this field indicates to which transport layer protocol the data portion of the IP datagram should be passed. For example, a value of 6 indicates that the data portion is passed to TCP. A value of 17 indicates that the data portion is passed to UTP. Moreover, a value of 1 indicates that the data portion belongs to ICMP, 2 for IGMP and 89 for OSPF. 16-bit header checksum helps in detecting the bit errors in the received IP datagram's header. Source and destination IP addresses represent the IPv4 address of the source host and the destination host respectively. When a source host creates an IP datagram, it inserts its IP address in this field and also inserts the IP address of the destination. Source knows the IP address of the destination with the help of DNS lookup. Data or payload contains the segment of the transport layer, which has to be delivered to the destination. It can carry other types of data as well, for example ICMP messages. This completes the IPv4 datagram format. If you have learned something from this video, then please like this video. Share this video so that more people can learn. Subscribe to Tech Terms if you want to learn more and turn the notification icon on. Thanks for watching. Alright. So for the role of the IP version 4. 
Guess me number seven, letter E, as an elephant. The network layer services implemented by the TCP IP protocol suit are the internet protocol or IP version 4 of IP version 4 is currently the most widely used version of IP. It is the only layer 3 protocol that is used to carry up, to carry users data over the internet and is the focus of the CCNA. Therefore, it will be the example we use for network layer protocols in this course. The internet protocols was designed as a protocol with low overhead. It provides only the functions that are necessary to deliver a packet from a source to a destination over an interconnected system of networks. The protocol was not designed to track and manage the flow of packets. These functions are performed by other protocols in other layers. So we have here the TCP IP, then the packet, we have the IP header segment. So we have two packets and TCP IP, TCP segment uh, yeah, encapsulated into IP packets. So this is our illustration. IP packets for flow through the internet. Connectionless, no connection is established before sending data packets. Then best effort, best effort for unreliable, no overhead is used to guarantee packet delivery and media independent operate independently of the medium carrying the data so these are our examples so for the connectionless service an example of connectionless communication is sending a bet sending a letter to someone without notifying the recipient okay, without notifying the recipient you're sending data in advance as shown in the figure the postal service still takes or still takes the letter and delivers it to the recipient Connectionless data communication works on the same principle. IP packets are sent without notifying the end host that they are coming. So for the best effort service or unreliable, the mission of the layer 3 is to transport the packets between the host while placing as little burden on the network as possible. Layer 3 is not concerned with or even aware of the type of communication contained inside of a packet. This responsibility is the role of the upper layers as it were. The upper layers can decide if the communication between services needs reliability and is or and if this communication can tolerate the overhead reliability requires IP is often referred to as an reliable protocol. Unreliable in this context does not mean that IP works properly sometimes and does not function well at other times. Nor does it mean that it is unsuitable as a data communication protocol. Unreliable means simply that IP does not have the does not have the capability to manage and recover from undelivered or corrupt packets. So we have here the best effort illustration. The packets are routed through the network quickly. So this As an reliable network layer protocol, 
IP does not guarantee that all sent packets will be received. Other protocols manage the process of tracking, tra tracking packets and ensuring their delivery. So for the media independent, again, it is the responsibility of the OSI data link layer to take to take an IP packet and prepare it for transmission over the communication medium. This means that the transport of BD of D or of IP packet is not limited to any particular medium. There is, however, one major characteristic of the media that the network layer considers the maximum size of PDU that each medium can transport. This characteristic is referred to as, as the maximum transmission unit or MTU, part of the control communication between the data link layer and the network layer is the establishment of a maximum size for the packet. The data link layer passes the MTU upward to the network layer. The network layer then determines how large to create the packets. Packaging the transport layer IP version 4 encapsulates or packages the transport layer segments or datagram so that the network can deliver it to the destination host. Click the steps in the figure to, the, to see this process. The IP version 4 encapsulation remains in place from one time the packet leaves the network layer. So we have here the generating IP packets, we have transport layer encapsulation, segment layer, then the data. In TCP IP based network, the network layer PDU is the IP packet. So network layer of the originating host until it arrives, it arrives the data layer of the destination host. The process of encapsulating data by layer enables the services at the different layers to develop and scale without affecting other layers. This means that transport layer segments can be readily packaged by existing network layer protocol such as IP version 4 and IP version 6 or by any network protocol that might be developed in the future. Next one we have packet header. An IP version 4 protocol defines many different fields in the packet header. These fields contain binary values that the IP version 4 services reference as they forward packets across the network. IP source address contains the 32-bit binary value that represents the packet source, network layer host, and or network layer host address. The IP destination address contains a 32-bit binary value that represents the packet source, network layer host address. The time to leave or TTL is an 8-bit binary value that indicates the remaining life of the packet. The TTL value is increased by at least 1 each time. The packet is processed by a router that is each hoop. When the value becomes 0, the router discards or drops the packet and it is removed from the network data flow. This mechanism prevents packets that cannot reach their destination from being forwarded indefinitely between routers in a routing loop. So time of service or TOS contains an 8-bit binary, binary value that is used to determine the priority of each packet. The value enables a quality of service 
QoS mechanism to be applied to high priori- priority packets such as those carrying telephony voice data. So protocol enables the network layer to pass the data to the upgrade upper protocol. Fragment offset identifies the order in which to place the packet fragment in the uh, reconstruction. So we have here the illustration. Network, uh, network designers have to ask on what basis should be the network be divided. So network dividing hosts into groups. Dividing networks rather than having having all hosts everywhere connected to one vast global network, it is more practical and manageable to group hosts into specific network. Historically, IP-based networks have their root as one large network, as this single network group. So the, the issues related to its growth to elevate uh, alleviate these issue, issues the large network was separate, separated into smaller networks that were interconnected these smaller networks are often called sub networks or subnets networks and subnets are terms often used intergen- interchangeably to refer to a network system made possible possible by shared common communication protocols the tcp ip model so for the improving performance large number of hosts connected to a single network can produce volumes of data traffic that may stretch if not overwhelm network resources such as bandwidth and routing capability dividing large networks so that the hosts who need to communicate are grouped together reduces the, tra- tra- the traffic across the internal networks. In addition to the actual data communication between hosts, network manage- management and control traffic or overhead also increases with the number of hosts. A significant contributor to this overhead can be network broadcast. A broadcast is a message sent from one host to all other hosts on the network. Typically, a host initiates a broadcast when information about another unknown host is required by broadcast are a necessary and useful tool used by protocols to enable data communication on networks. However, large number of hosts generate large number of uh, broadcasts they consume the that consume network bandwidth and because every other host has to process the broadcast packet it receives and other productive function that a host is performing are also interrupted or uh, discredited so for the number eight number a guess me that are e as an elephant Skill building activities with answer key. Alright, so can you answer this one? Instruction answers the following questions below. What does the transport layer do to a PDU so that it can be communicated from host to another? So it's your own what is your own opinion of this one? So for the model answer, number one, we have the network layer protocol encapsulates or uh, packages the transport layer segment or datagram so that the network can deliver it to the destination host. The IP version 4 encapsulation domain or remains from time the packet leaves the network layer of the originating host until it arrives at the network layer of the destination host. The routing performed by intermediary devices 
only considers the content of the packet given header that encapsulates the segment in all cases. The data portion of the packet that is the encapsulated transport layer or uh, PDU or FDU or yes PDU remains unchanged during the network layer in the process. Number two, what are the three basic characteristics of IP version 4? What are those? So we have it connectionless, best effort, and media independent. So for the connectionless, no connection is established before sending data packets. Best effort, we are unreliable. No overhead is used to do, to guarantee packet delivery. Media independent. Operate independently of the medium carrying data. For the number three, describe the packet header field used by the router to determine where to forward the packet. So the model answer we have the IP version 4 destination address field contains the layer 3 address of the destination host. The router uses the network portion of this address to determine where to forward the packet. So for the number 4, state the purpose of the TTN in IP version 4 packet header. The TTN or time to leave is an 8-bit binary value that indicates the remaining life of the packet. The TTL value is decreased by at least one each time the packet is processed by a router, that is, or each hop. When the value becomes zero, the router starts or drops the packet and it is removed from one or from the network data flow, this mechanism pre prevents packets that cannot reach their destination from being forwarded independent, independent, indefinitely between routers. In a routing loop, a routing loop were permitted to continue. The network would become congested with the data packets that will never reach their destination. Decreasing the TTL value at each hook ensures that it eventually becomes zero and that the packet with a expired TTL bit will be dropped. Lastly, list three reasons for dividing a network into smaller groups of both. So we have uh, geographic location can make a location logical place to start when segmenting network. We have also purpose, the volume of type, volume and type of data generated by class of users of users make it upgrade to a group similar uses into a network. And lastly, we have over ownership can enhance data security so for the uh, three uh, reasons for dividing into a network we have geographic location group or purpose then ownership uh, geographical location purpose then ownership Uh, kindly answer the what, activity for what I know chart or what have you learned in this lesson. So in your own opinion, all answers are accepted and valid. So for the activity 5, summative assessment, number 1. Which protocol provides connectionless network layer services? Oh, what is that? So we have IP or internet protocol. 
Number two, which of the following or which protocol is connectionless? So we have B, UDP. Which part of the network layer address does the, the, does the router uses or use during path determination? So we have that ID, the network address. Number four, the packet arrives at the destination host and process at layer three. This layer three pass process is called decapsulation, addressing, routing, or encapsulation. We have a decapsulation. The packet arrives at the destination host in its process at layer three. This uh, layer three process is called. So we have decapsulation. Five. It contains binary values that. The IP version 4 services reference, reference as the forward packets across the network. We have B, packet address. So for the lesson wrap up, kindly check what module are we now and then shade it. Uh, this, this is also. So for the pre frequently asked question, ask how router works. Again, a router is a networking devices or device that forwards data packets between computer networks. Routers perform the traffic directing function on the network. Data sent through the internet such as web page or email is in the form of data packets. A packet is typically provided from one router to another router through the network that constitute a inter a of an internetwork e.g. such as the internet until it reaches its destination uh, after until it reaches its destination node when the packet reaches the router it will look at the destination address to the destination where to send the packet if the router forwarding enables know where the packet should Go, the router will send the packet out along the upgrade, upgrade uh, route. Lastly, what is packet routing? In packet switching network, routing is the higher level decision making that directs network packets from the router, their, their source, source, forward their destination through the intermediate network nodes by specific packet forwarding mechanism routing all system through IP means having just one network to maintain and upgrade data traverse across the internet in packets each packet can carry and carry a maximum of 1500 bytes around this packet is a wrapper with a header and folder so for the number 9 guess me letter N and number 10 letter i as in elephant or ilo ilo so that's the end of our module discussion thank you so much for uh listening listening and have a nice day everyone thank you so much